Hi friends, welcome back. In this video, we are going to design round robin arbiter. This is one another kind of arbiter which is widely used in digital designs. So let's get started. So first we are going to see what is an arbiter and what is the need of an arbiter in digital designs. Then we are going to see its applications and examples, the advantage and disadvantage of round robin arbiter. Then we are going to implement the Verilog HDL of round robin arbiter. We are going to synthesize the design and simulate it using a very low test match. So here you can see that there are four CPUs which are trying to access a common shared resource which is memory. The memory can be accessed only by a single CPU at a time. So in order to enable this mechanism of accessing the memory by a single CPU at a time, we need some additional hardware to implement this feature. The additional hardware is nothing but an arbiter. So here we are going to use a round robin arbiter where the four CPUs will get access to the memory one by one in a round robin fashion. For example, if all the CPUs are trying to access the memory at the same time, then they will get access one by one. For example, first CPU 0 will get, then CPU 1, then CPU 2 and then CPU 3. Here, one another important point to note that this arbiter basically implements fixed time slice. What does that mean is, every CPU will have a predefined fixed time to access the memory. So the round robin arbiter design looks like this. It will, it will have a clock signal, it will have reset signal and it has four requests. And it will, based on the request and the round robin algorithm, it will grant access to one of the requesters at a time. Round robin scheduling algorithm will look like this on startup of the device or once the device is out of the reset, the request 0 will get the highest priority, then request 1, then request 2 and then request 3. After request 3, the priority will go to request 0 and it will basically follow this structure. Now what are the applications or examples of this round robin arbiter as we discussed? When the multiple processors are trying to access a common said resource, we need an arbiter there. The another example is in routers where multiple users are trying to compete for a switch. So these are some common examples where we need the arbiters. The advantage or disadvantage of the round robin arbiter. So the advantage is since the said resource is allocated uniformly to all the requester and hence it does not lead any of the requesters to go for starvation. Unlike the fixed priority arbiter when the highest priority requester is frequently requesting the common resource then the other requesters might go into the starvation condition. So that is not the case in round robin arbiter. Round robin arbiter makes sure that each and every requester get some time to access the memory or the memory here is the said resource. The disadvantage is basically the advantage in fixed priority arbiter becomes a disadvantage in round robin arbiter where all the requesters are treated equally and we cannot give preference to a specific requesters. Now the specifications of the round robin arbiter which we are going to implement in this video are it is going to take four inputs which are four requests and is going to output a single grant in the form of one hot. And the round robin algorithm will be the requester 0 will get the highest priority, then the requester 1, requester 2, requester 3 and then it will repeat to requester 0, 1, 2, 3. We are going to use the ADA playground which is a web based application to code the design and synthesize and simulate it. The ADA playground has inbuilt open source tools like EOSIS for synthesis and Riveria for simulation. So now let's open the ADA playgrounds and synthesize and simulate the design. So I have basically coded the round robin arbiter with fixed time slices and we will go through this design and we will understand and then we will synthesize and simulate it. So now let's get started. So the round robin arbiter will have clock input, reset input, three requests and a ground output signal, four width ground output signal. Now we are going to use FSM techniques to implement this design. We have declared two variables or we will call it two registers, present state and next state registers and we have parameters which basically defines the state of the state machine. Now on reset, we will assign the ideal state to the present state, else the next state will be our present state. So this code is basically going to be a sequential logic. This is going to realize into registers. Now we are going to implement or we are basically going to code the next state logic. How will the next state logic will be implemented? So this is basically a purely combinational logic here. 
which will depend on the present state. So if the present state is idle or basically when the device is out of the reset, during the reset the state is idle state. So once the device is out of reset, it will start from the idle state. So it will start sampling the request, the input request in this idle state. So when the request 0 is asserted, the next state will be as 0, else if request 1 is asserted, it will be as 1, request 2, as 2 and request 3. When it is asserted, it will go to the next state which is S3. Else, it will be in this ideal state. Now, when the FSM is in S0 state, the FSM comes in S0 state when request 0 is sampled as 1. When the request 1 is basically asserted. So, in S0 state, we will sample the next request. So, if request 1 is high, then we will go to the S1 state. If request 2, we will go to S2. If request 3, we will go to S3. Else, if request 0 is still asserted, in the next clock cycle also, if request 0 is still asserted, it will be in the state S0. Else, if none of the conditions are satisfied, that means none of the request is asserted, it will go into the idle state. Now coming into the S1 state, when the FSM comes to S1 state, in S1 state basically, S1 state that means the request 1 is serviced and after 1 basically, as per the round robin scheduling, the request 2 should be serviced. So in as funny state, we will sample for the request 2. So if request 2 is asserted, we will go into the next state as 2. If else, if request 2 is not asserted, we will see if the request 3 is asserted, we will go to state 3. Else, after request 3, we are going to suppose to service the request 0. So we will sample the request 0. If request 0, we will go to S0. Else, after request 0, our as per our round robin algorithm, the next requester which should be which should be sampled or which should be serviced is requester 1. So if requester 1 is asserted, we will go to S1 state, else we will go to idle state. Once we are in the S2 state, that means we are basically servicing the request 2, then we will, when we are in the S2 state, we will basically see if requester 3 has asserted. When we are in S2 state, the next priority is basically to sample the requester 3. So if the requester 3 is asserted, we will go to S3 state, otherwise after requester 3, the next priority is requester 0. So it will go into the requester 0, it will sample the requester 0. If the requester 0 is asserted, the next state is S0. Else if request 1 is asserted, it will go to S1 state. If request 2 is asserted, it will go to S2 state. Else it will go to idle state. And similarly, when we are in the S3 state, we are going to sample the request 0. If 0 is asserted, we are going to S0 state. If 1, we are going to S1. If 2, we are going to S2. If 3, we are going to S3. Else we are going to the idle state. In default state, when we are in default state, we are going to sample if request 0 is asserted, we will go to S0, if 1, S1, if 2, S2, if 3, S3 state. Else we will be in the idle state. Now let, let's see the output logic. So the output, when we are in the S0 state, that means the request 0 is granted. So the grant should be for tick B0001. When the present state is S1, that means request 1 is getting serviced and the grant will be 0010. When the present state is as 2, that means the second request is getting serviced and the grant will be 0100. When we are in as 3 state, the third request is getting serviced and the grant will be 1000. Default, the grant will be 0000. So now let's synthesize this design. To synthesize this design, just in tools and simulation sections, go to the synthesis section and here select the Yosis and check the show diagram after run and just give it. So actually this is the diagram, synthesis diagram which results after synthesizing this design. So it is a pretty big diagram but we can analyze this diagram and we can basically analyze gate by gate, flop by flop, how the flops and the logic gates are getting realized. Now let's simulate this design. So to simulate this design, I have written the very low test bench. So these are the inputs, clock reset request and we have the grant is an output signal. Then we have instantiated the DOT. We have generated a 10 nanosecond clock here. Here we have initialized, reset is asserted initially. Then after 5 nanosecond, we have the reset is getting deasserted and we are basically randomly we are driving the request signal and after some time we are resetting the design and finishing the simulation. So this action is basically to dump the signals 
into wave form window. So to simulate this design, you can select the LDIC Rivera Pro simulator and just check in the open EP wave after run and just give it. So let me rearrange the signals in a wave. It will be helpful to understand the or then to analyze the waveforms better. I am going to change the radix into binary so that we can see the how the ground signals is basically granting the requesters to access the memory. So if you see once the design is out of reset at this falling edge, all the requesters are high. All the requesters are basically requesting the arbiter to to give access to the memory. But as per the round robin algorithm, the requester first access which will get is the requester 1. So requester 1 is high here so it will get the access. In the next log cycle as per the round robin algorithm the second requester should get the access. So the second requester will get the access and the ground will become 0, 0, 1, 0. In the third clock cycles the third requester should get the access and the ground will become 1, 0, 0. and in fourth clock cycle the fourth requester or the request th 3 will get the access. Now at this falling age we see that the requester first, second and third requesters are basically trying to access the memory. So when the first, second and third are trying to access the memory requester first should get the access. In the next clock cycle you see that first, second, third requester is trying to access the memory then it should get the access. Here we see that third requester, here, here the third requester in the previous cycle if you see here the third requester was granted access. So now in the next clock cycles basically the preference is for the fourth requester will get the access. So here we will see if the fourth requester is still basically still requesting the access. So yes at this rising as clock is the fourth requester is, the fourth request is high so the fourth requester will be granted access to the memory. Now again after the after the fourth it will come to the first. So in the in this clock cycle, in this rising of the clock cycle, the arbiter will check again for the requesters zero. So if the zero is asserted, the zero request will be serviced. The next clock cycle, one if one is asserted, the one will be serviced. In the next clock cycle, third will be serviced because the third request is asserted but the design goes into the reset. The reset is asserted here and the ground becomes zero zero. Thank you.